Go way around it. A disappointing Saturday for the Wisconsin Badgers. The lack of offense, the inability to get a big play. Iowa had one big play. 82-yard touchdown run from Lee Sean Williams. The Hawkeyes defense was special, and the special teams were beyond special for the Hawkeyes. Put it all together, it was 15-6 Iowa at Camp Randall Stadium. We'll hear from some of the players. We'll have our weekly sit-down with head coach Luke Fickle. And we'll also sit down and have a fun chat with one of the emerging players on the Wisconsin defense, cornerback Ricardo Hallman. All coming up on today's edition of the Badger Sports Report. Snap to Mordecai, Iowa rushing four. Tanner with time, shot play, right side, Bryson Green, got it! Timing catch inside the 45 of Iowa. You know, the shot that takes a snap into round, Ragaini bending right, Jack Petrosky throws him down! Back at the 37 yard line, Petrosky, the transfer from Michigan State with a big play for the Badgers. It's a shotgun snap, Badgers trying to bring some heat. Here comes Alexander Smith, and the quarterback gets to Deacon Hill at the 10 yard line. Falling slot to the right, first down handoff to Braylon, off the left side, little stiff arm across the 40 yard line, up to the 45 of Wisconsin, make it the 46. Gain of 11, that was more than a little stiff arm, and that gets Braylon Allen in the 3,000-yard club, the 14th member all-time at Wisconsin. Wind whipping around a little bit now, so it looks like he's kicking into it. Eyes are down, here's the snap, spot, kick is away, has the distance, yes sir, it's good! From 52 yards away, Nathaniel Vakos makes this a one-point game. Let's go, man. Hey, you double three. One, two, three. You yeah. The end around. Chimere DK to the 10, to the 5. Touchdown, Wisconsin. Pass pops out of the air. It's picked off by Mama John Metza. He's gone. Braylon Allen all the way. Touchdown, Wisconsin. And it's picked off by Hunter Waller. There is a big, big win for the Wisconsin Badgers. The Badger Sports Report is presented by UW Health. UW Health Sports Medicine, treating the Badgers, treating you. And is brought to you by the Construction Business Group, Wisconsin operating engineers and respected contractors. BuildingWisconsinTogether.com. And by Gruber Law Offices, a proud partner of Wisconsin Athletics. One call, that's all. After a serious accident, you'll need a team to fight for the results you deserve. We're here for you whenever you need us. Gruber Law Offices, proud partner of Wisconsin Athletics. One call, that's all. I've always been a storyteller. I capture those beautiful moments, things other people miss. My health took an unexpected turn, but my care team put my needs in focus designing solutions to support my ambitions. Now that's just a footnote in my journey, a small part of a story that's still being written. UW Health, remarkable. Something big is happening. Introducing hy V Perks. Now, hy V Fuel Saver is hy V Perks. Get the same great benefits like fuel savings. Plus, save even more on hundreds of products store-wide with H Perks prices. Like Tide, H Perks price, $9.97. And Bananas, H Perks price, 39 cents a pound. Make the switch or sign up today. It's free and easy. These are operating engineers. They operate top of the line innovative machines and build stuff that matters. And operating engineers are well paid. They even get paid to train. As an apprentice, you can make $56,000 a year from day one during training. No school loans and no debt. When your training is complete, you'll have a stable career job that is high skill, high tech, and high pay. We need operating engineers right now. Your future can begin today. After a serious accident, you'll need a team to fight for the results you deserve. We're here for you whenever you need us. Groover Law Offices, proud partner of Wisconsin Athletics. One call, that's all. You know, it stinks. Um, you know, we knew this was a big game. 
um, and we, you know, we came up short, but um, I can promise that we're not going to lay down. Um, you know, we're going to learn from this and get better. Um, that's the kind of guys we have in the locker room, and um, you know, we just didn't execute good enough today. It's just kind of sickening, honestly. That's how I feel. I'm just knowing that, you know, I, we practiced hard this week. You know, we did everything we could as far as preparation, but we just came to the game and just got out physical. So, I mean, when it comes down to that, you just got to play. There's nothing you can do but just go home and critique yourself. I think we kind of knew coming into this game that that's kind of how Iowa was. All they need is one big play, and they're happy with that, and they can win games that way. Uh, it sucks because we did pretty well most of the game, but that one play was enough for them to come out with a victory. Penalties are, are huge. Penalties and turnovers. You know, we, we didn't create any defensively. We had too many penalties, both sides of the ball and special teams. Um, and in the, in the special teams battle, they killed us. I mean, we didn't create field position for the offense. Um, and we just didn't didn't take care of what we needed to do. I mean, we, we just got beat. Uh, we, we didn't play um, to our potential. Uh, we didn't play physical enough. But the next few well enough, I mean, that's just what it comes down to. Honestly, coming in as a transfer student, I didn't really know that much about the Iowa rivalry. But um, people tell you about the rivalry, how competitive it is, how much it means to them. And uh, honestly, you don't understand it until you're actually out there playing against the guys. So after coming back in the locker room, seeing all those Wisconsin guys, how they felt, seeing all the seniors, how they felt, how heartbroken they were, uh, it, was, it was tough. I think uh, Brain's very capable of stepping up to that plate and, uh, or stepping into that role and uh, filling those shoes. Um, you know, obviously, I think there's things Braid and Tanner do a little differently at quarterback, um, but he, Braid's still a very good player, and I, I'm uh, excited to see what he can do going forward. Um, if he has to step into that role, I think he'll do a great job there. He's a really talented player with a lot of potential, and uh, you know, he wouldn't be here if he wasn't. It's definitely, you know, a challenge for me to play like Tanner Mordecai. I go down. Um, he's a great player. He's, he's a leader on our offense. He's a team captain. Um, but at the end of the day, you know, that's what we prepare for. Um, we have the next man up mentality. And, um, you know, we got to rally around guys, and, and at the end of the day, um, you know, they don't care who's in, who's in or out. It's, just, it's still a win or a loss there. In the score column, there's, there's things that we could have done, done better to help support Braden, and he came in and battled, and, uh, you know, we're going we're gonna to continue to work and grow and uh, get better from this. We believe in education. We believe in public schools. We believe in financial security for Wisconsin public school employees and their families. WEA Member Benefits, proud partner of Wisconsin Athletics. WEABenefits.com My favorite breakfast is Odyssey yogurt. I asked Mommy where it comes from and she took me to a dairy farm to learn all about milk and most importantly, cows. Wisconsin cows are definitely the happiest, which means they make the tastiest yogurt. My favorite is blueberry. What's your flavor? Support your local farmers. E-I-E-I -E -I Odyssey I had big dreams, then I got sick. UW Health made it their mission to give me a fresh start and a new kidney. Now my dreams are infinite. UW Health, remarkable. From day one, Badgers head coach Luke Fickle talked about continuing to be a developmental program, player development from the high school level, or if it's guys transferring into Wisconsin, it is about developing the overall player. And with that as the backdrop, we get into this week's segment with the head coach. It doesn't have to be freshmen. I'll probably ask you about a couple freshmen here, but I'm thinking of one of those guys who came over with you from Cincinnati, Will Pauling. Um, I know he played last year, you know, some modest statistics. He's really, and, and you talk about toughness, it's not just defined to offensive and defensive linemen, right? This guy has a lot of it. He does, and, and that was the one thing we knew um, of him being with you for the last two, or last year or so. Uh, and the uniqueness is this is only the fifth game he started. You know, so sometimes we see him and we expect even more and more because, you know, he seems like he's an older guy. He's still a young guy. He's still really developing uh, in all the skills that he, that he has. I mean, we saw more even this past week on some special teams. Um, so he's, his role continues to grow. But I think the biggest thing is, is you can, we can, and I hope everybody else can see him continuing to grow throughout uh, this season so far. He can do a lot of things, including throw the ball. Yeah. I forgot Purdue about that. That's, that's right. That's right. That's something I didn't even know, to be honest with you, <laughs> until it happened. That was actually, I know it was a little while ago, but normally on that type of a play, when it looked like it wasn't there, a, a receiver is just going to tuck it and run. He stayed patient, didn't he? He looked like he maybe had done this before. 
I might have told him just go ahead and tuck that thing and run. We're in a good position where we are right now. It was, I think it was still only first down. I'm not sure I would have said that, uh, hey, why don't you go ahead and try to weave in and out of that thing, pull the ball back down and see if you can sling it out their sidearm. But, um, you know, he's got a lot of confidence, and I think that's what we're starting to see, that let it fly mentality of putting some guys in those situations to allow them to be aggressive. It's fun even in someone who watches a game from where we watch it, Tausch and I, is when you see a young player or any player, you'll go through some struggles and then overcome that. I know you weren't here, but Ricardo Holman, there were, it went through a tough stretch, as any player will, and some are more visible than others based on the position. But really, you know, he, he's the easy storyline based off of a 95-yard pick six but you saw some things even in the spring from him, did you not? I did. And, and you know, it's like sometimes it's subtle. Uh, and I didn't even recognize it the spring until the spring game when all of a sudden he has, you know, three picks in the spring game. And, and you start to go back and you start to, you know, kind of watch and evaluate the entire spring. And you recognize – I recognize that he was one of the most consistent guys we had, to me, on the whole team. And then you saw the same thing in fall camp, whether it's, you know, not the 95-yard – pick six that uh, is easy to see, but it's just the consistency that you need in order to be good, which mm. in terms at some point in time will give you a chance to be great. And I think that he's displayed that uh, to a lot of us in the last nine months. There is a lot of exciting freshmen. You you haven't had to play a lot of freshmen a, a ton of time so far this season. A, a young man like Christian Allegro and Jonas Duclona, who gets in there, a young man from Naples, Florida, it's almost an automatic when someone at that position comes in for the first time. The, the offensive coordinator is going, get this guy. Uh, it seemed like your, your guy has a little bit of poison held up okay. He did. He did. I think that they maybe three of the first four plays he was in there, I think they actually threw at him. Um, and he did. He did a really good job. Uh, you know, and it, it was it's great for him to get in in that situation where it's not – completely out I, I literally asked coach Haynes on the sideline I said is Rico okay and he said yeah he's fine I'm like okay well, I, <laughs> then we have are building that confidence in Jonas putting him in those situations where you know they're still taking shots it's not they're just running the football um, and, and he had to play and, and yes they might have gave up a touchdown right there at the very end but I think that uh I think that's going to go a long way for his development and our trust in him as well. When you're in a recruiting process, there, you know, there are certain players who are just going to stand out, like Allegro has length to yeah. him, and there can be speed guys. The poise, that term I mentioned a few minutes ago, when you're in a recruiting process, how much of a read can you get on a young man like that? It's hard to know. It's hard to know what they're going to, what they're going to be like when you throw them out in front of that 80-some thousand people and the television set's all on them. And, and so, you know, there's some guys that play some high, high-end football, and, you know, some of those guys that play some of those national schedules, and you might have a better idea. Um, but when thrown in this environment and things like that, like, the best thing we've got to evaluate on is whether it's the winter stuff just to see how they handle some of those really difficult morning pressure situations that are still different than, you know, obviously Saturday afternoons or Saturday nights. Um, but it's you got to be out there in order to see it. you got to be out there in order to kind of – get more comfortable in it with any player and maybe especially a young one when you get to this stage of the year there is the intensity in how you guys do everything is that something you got to keep an extra sharp eye on okay how is this is this player responding the way i want him to every day and especially yes and especially with the younger guys because there is a uh, bit of things that add up and i i was Kind of, you'd say sometimes those younger guys, by the end of the season, they're not younger guys, but they're still young in the way they handle things, meaning like they can get tired. And I mean that just mentally, the length of a season and the pressure of a season. Sometimes you see those young guys start to struggle a little bit more mentally than they are even physically. So all those things you're trying to evaluate to say, hey, we want you to continue to grow through the season, not just because you're playing, but the way you're handling everything as well. All right, that's Badgers head coach Luke Fickle. Badgers uh, hitting the road this coming week, going down to Champaign to take on Illinois. More to come as we continue with this week's edition of the Badgers Sports Report. After a serious accident, you'll need a team to fight for the results you deserve. We're here for you whenever you need us. Groover Law Offices, proud partner of Wisconsin Athletics. One call, that's all. Something big is happening. Introducing Hy-Vee Perks. 
now. High V Fuel Saver is High V Perks. Get the same great benefits like fuel savings. Plus, save even more on hundreds of products store wide with H Perks prices. Like Tide, H Perks price $9.97. And Bananas, H Perks price $0.39 cents a pound. Make this switch or sign up today. It's free and easy. WEA member benefits dedicated to helping Wisconsin public school employees become financially secure with programs designed for the education community. Proud partner of Wisconsin Athletics, weabenefits.com. Well, after the recent game against Rutgers, I heard some folks say that was about as loud as they've heard it at Camp Randall Stadium for a while. The Watts was a 95-yard pick six from Ricardo Holman. Toward the end of the half, Rutgers looked like it's going to go in, make it a three-point game maybe. Instead, it's a 17-point game. And with that, we visit with Rico, as they as they call it. Was there any doubt when you picked it off that you were going to take it all the way? Did you think the quarterback might be able to trip you up a little bit okay. or no? There's a little doubt just because, you know, we had played the whole drive. I was already a little fatigued. I was a little <laughs> tired already. But I knew once I intercepted it, I was like, I got to take this all the way because if I don't, I'm going to get so much crap on the sidelines. Everybody's saying I'm slow. Everybody's going to be yelling at me and stuff and all of that. So I knew I had to push through. I had to take it there to the house. Weren't you on like a state champ level relay team in high school? Though? Yes, like, sir. People need to know that. Yeah, no, nah, that, that, that's, <laughs> a, that's a hidden fact. You know, the guys on the team be trying to say I'm not the fast or one of the faster guys, but they don't know that I was on a four by one team that was uh, placed third in states in Florida. You know, guys are fast out there. So. Yeah, I was, on a, I was on a state champion team that placed third, so that, that, that was awesome as well. I did see some metric that said you were you were plus you know 20 miles an hour there at, at peak there. So is it and maybe maybe it was more than that? You get shortchanged a little bit. I, or? I don't know because it was they were joking with you. Coach Haynes was like, I heard you only hit an 18.7, and the coach Brady, coach Brady was telling me, oh yeah, you only hit an 18.7. You didn't you didn't run fast. Don't don't get too hyped okay, up. Okay. But they were they were joking. I knew I was telling Coach <laughs> Haynes. I was like, nah, I, I felt 20. I had to have had at least a 20 or something like that. <laughs> it was it's interesting, Ricardo, because I was talking with Coach Fickle. I said, it's, it's easy for us on the outside to want to talk to you after a 95-yard pick six. The smart ones were talking to you a long time ago, and even going back into spring ball, because you know obviously it was the first chance for Coach Fickle and the staff to see you. He talked about how consistent you were during spring. Take us through that, because we remember that the interceptions in the, in the launch in the spring game but it went back further than that, right? You really felt like you were coming into your own in spring ball last year? Oh, yes, sir, definitely. You know, um, I pride myself on consistency, and then as a defensive back especially, you got to have that because, you know, you want to be as consistent as you can be. People are going to take shots at you all the time, so especially with me being an undersized guy out there, I know people are going to take shots, so my technique and the effort I play with has to be consistent. So, you know, uh, just going, in, going into spring, and I, I felt myself kind of, taking that next step and getting better each and every practice. And that's something I really prided myself on was one of my goals, just, you know, not even if I have an amazing day all the time, I just want to get better every single day. And I feel like with my technique, my effort level, even with ball skills, it's just little certain skills I worked on every day to get better. And I just feel like it helped me to grow consistent and more consistent every day. And I think you guys are finally seeing like a kind of not, I'm not going to say a finished product, but mm -hmm. like a product and a work of like what I can become and what, uh, how much I still got to be more consistent, still working to get better and better each and every day. But I feel like you guys are seeing what I can, I'm capable of. I uh, always thought, too, one of the fun things about what I do is watching former Badger players connect with current. And it could be at any number of positions, running back you, quarterbacks from the past talking. You and Scott Starks have yep. developed a pretty good relationship. For those who don't know, tell us about that a little bit. Oh, yes, sir. So uh, my freshman year, I think I can't remember if it was freshman year or sophomore year. He was uh, he was my donor at the lunch endowment. He didn't he wasn't able to make it, so I didn't really get to talk to him. But after that, I think uh, some time went by. It was uh, right I think during the midst of spring ball, or towards the end. Um, he followed me on Instagram, so you know uh, I hit him up. I was like, oh yeah, oh wow, this is Scott Stars. Uh, let me hit him up. You know this is Badger great, Badger legend. So I uh, follow him, uh, hit him in a direct message, told him how much of a fan of him I was and the work he did here and all he does. So you know um, I was able to connect with him, get his number, and then you know we. Just, We've texted a couple times. Uh, we've been on the phone a couple times. So he's a great guy. He's uh, given me some advice. Give me some. Uh, he's been a great mentor for me, uh, just helping me with football tips and just some life tips that we talk about. And so it's, it's been great to have a some uh, a relationship with him. So he was. He's involved in one of the most famous plays of the last 25, 30 years. I'm not sure if you're aware of that. It was at Purdue back in like 2004. Hmm. The, Purdue is ready to win the game. 
There was a fumble. A teammate of, of, of Scott knocked the ball out, a guy named Robert Brooks. Scott scooped and scored. It was the difference in the game. Wow. It was that was like Purdue was ranked fifth, sixth in the country. Game day was there. It was a big deal. You didn't know that? No, you see, I didn't. Surprised. You I said, didn't oh, know yeah. That. One of the one of the most famous plays of the last 30-some years of Badger football. Oh, wow. That's crazy. I didn't <laughs> even know that. That's awesome, though. I didn't know that. It, no, it, for, you, you, the position you guys play, it's always fascinating because it is, it's a spotlight position. You've yeah. got to have, if it's thick skin, great confidence, it, take us into your world a little bit because you, there's everybody has – an up and down part and when you I mean the ups are it's been so much fun watching with you here but take us into the world and and maybe the the pressure you put on yourself to maximize your capability out there yeah yeah definitely you know like like you said with db it's a position of up and downs you know it like you have to take the great with the bad as well you know you're going to play at a high level and then sometimes you're going to get beat you're going to like you play this game long enough everybody knows you're going to get beat eventually you're going to have a bad game or you're going to do something so just kind of like being able to stay consistent no matter what, no matter ups and downs, because you can't let anything affect you out there. Because if a team sees you down, let's say they caught a touchdown on you or they caught a pass on you, you're, oh man, like you're driving your head out there. Oh yeah, we're gonna go at him again. Like we're gonna keep going at him. So that's just that's all defensive back is. You have to be able to compete no matter what happens. And I think um, so far I've been able to do a good job of that. As you guys can see, like even with last year at Michigan State, I I, I didn't hang up my head down too long on that. I knew that I had to get better. I knew I wanted to be better, and I knew I wouldn't let that happen again. And I, I think that's just like a product of me working and just not growing complacent and wanting that to happen to me again. So just like you said, it's a position of up and down. Your confidence always has to be high no matter what. Because I, I take it as I'm going to get beat, but I'm going to make them do it all game if they're going to beat me. So yeah. I just take that uh, mindset and approach every time I hit the field. And there's the resolve that you have yourself, and then there's talking with guys like Scott Starks, and then current teammates. I mean, Daryl Peterson yeah. is, is maybe is probably your best friend yes, in the team. So I mean, knowing that you've got like guys in the locker room, they've got your back. That's got to mean the world, right? Oh yeah, that means the world. Just like even I'm uh, like going back to Michigan State my last year when I had the tough game. You know, I was really emotional in the locker room and stuff like that. It was a hard time for me. Every single guy in my had my back. John Torchio was the first person to come at me. Hey, this game was not on you. I made mistakes too. You know, just keep getting better. We're all good. All my teammates overwhelm me with love and support and stuff like that. So it, it feels so great to know these guys have your back, and it makes you want to go even harder for them every time you step on the field. All right, I don't want to get beat for these guys. I'm going to play my best that I can for these guys. You know, we have a great support system. I love this team and everybody on it. All right, lighter notes as we as we wind this down. Uh, I've heard a lot of people say that you're the funniest guy on the team. Oh yeah, it, not no doubt. Yes, no doubt. You know, we have a little <laughs> me, me, Quincy, uh, Will, and DP. We all have a little ranking system because we like to say we're the f uh, funniest four on the team, <laughs> and it's consistent that I'm the number one in the group and I'm the number one on the team. You know, other guys will vote DP and Will here and there, but I think I'm a consistent number one on the team. So whoever it is, it's number two. It's a distant second, you would oh, say yeah. that? It's, it's definitely a distant <laughs> second. Everybody knows that. You can ask around. Everybody knows that. I'm telling you now, as we as we speak, maybe you have a podcast in your future. You and Daryl, you oh, and DP, yeah. that could be pretty good stuff now, oh, yeah. right? Oh, uh, yeah. Big time funny stuff. We're gonna, uh, it's going to range from so many times. I'm excited to get that started, too. All right. Keep your eye out. Keep your ears out for that. That'll be good. Rico yeah. and DP, Ricardo Holman, Daryl yes, Peterson, be a lot of fun. Stay with us. We'll take a break. More to come on the Badger Sports Report. Yes, I had big dreams. Then I got sick. UW Health made it their mission to give me a fresh start and a new kidney. Now my dreams are infinite. UW Health. Remarkable. These are operating engineers. They operate top-of-the-line innovative machines and build stuff that matters. And operating engineers are well paid. They even get paid to train. As an apprentice, you can make $56,000 a year from day one during training. No school loans and no debt. When your training is complete, you'll have a stable career job that is high skill, high tech, and high pay. We need operating engineers right now. Your future can begin today. After a serious accident, you'll need a team to fight for the results you deserve. We're here for you whenever you need us. Groover Law Offices, proud partner of Wisconsin Athletics. One call, that's all. The Badger Sports Report is presented by UW Health. UW Health Sports Medicine, treating the Badgers, treating you. And is brought to you by the Construction Business Group. 
Wisconsin operating engineers and respected contractors. BuildingWisconsinTogether.com And by Gruber Law Offices, a proud partner of Wisconsin Athletics. One call, that's all. Regroup time for the Badgers. They hit the road going down to Champaign to take on an Illinois team coming off a big road win against Maryland. The Badgers and the Illini will hook up at 2.30 on Saturday. We'll talk to you next week. Thanks for watching. This has been a presentation from Learfield. I've always been a storyteller. I capture those beautiful moments, things other people miss. My health took an unexpected turn, but my care team put my needs in focus, designing solutions to support my ambitions. Now that's just a footnote in my journey, a small part of a story that's still being written. UW Health, remarkable. We believe in education. We believe in public schools. At WEA Member Benefits, we believe in helping Wisconsin public school employees and their families achieve their financial goals by providing personal insurance, retirement and investment, and financial planning programs that are designed specifically for the education community. Proud partner of Wisconsin Athletics, weabenefits.com. My favorite breakfast is Odyssey yogurt. I asked mommy where it comes from and she took me to a dairy farm to learn all about milk and most importantly, cows. Wisconsin cows are definitely the happiest, which means they make the tastiest yogurt. My favorite is blueberry. What's your flavor? Support your local farmers. E-I-E-I -E -I Odyssey.